Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Now recently here in the UK, this is 2014, we had a lot of bad winter storms. They piled in off the Atlantic one after the other, just pounding us for weeks on end. Well, okay, they snap trees, bring down cables, that sort of thing. Obviously a lot of the land base, coastline, has been totally eroded. But also what a lot of people don't realise, some of the seabed has been eroded by the action of the currents, the storms, the wind, the waves. So if you looked on a fishing chart and you think, oh, there's a sandbank, I'll go and fish there. Some of these sandbanks, especially down off Bognor where the big place banks were, you go there now and you put the echo sound on and uh, they appear to have disappeared. Is that right? Appear to have disappeared? Well, they're gone anyway. It's up to you to go out there and resurvey the area. And you can do this with a system called Inside Genesis which allows you to download the information you've got from your sonar. If you've got a low wedge unit, two or three other units do it as well, you can record what you've done, your data, survey it up and down, take it back, plug it in your computer, bingo, you actually can resurvey an area possibly hasn't been done before. Therefore, you'll be first onto the fishing marks, but also, if you're a boater, you need, not just a fisherman, you need to know, let's say if you're a yachtsman, you need to know where those new sandbanks are because you could be piling along looking at your chart, bang, you're in it. Let's say, for instance, you've got a rib. You're whacking along at 50 knots. You think, well, my chart says that the sandbank's over there. Uh, no, the storms have altered it. It's bang, <laughs> two banks. Anyway, I got an invite to go out and look at the Bramble Bank. Now, the Bramble Bank, for those who don't know, is on the south coast of England, near the Isle of Wight, between the mainland and the Isle of Wight is an area, a body of water called the Solent. In the Solent are a lot of boats, and they go backwards and forth to the Isle of Wight, and the Bramble Bank's in the middle. But the Bramble Bank has moved, we feel, the same as other banks. They've been altered, they've been slightly eroded. So if you're a yachtsman, or you're a rib user, or even a fisherman, you should get out there, survey the area yourself, and check out where those sandbanks are. But we went out on a rib with Craig, Craig Davis of Navico, and Lo and behold, recorded the Bramble Bank, and we did indeed find it's altered slightly. Join us on a trip, you might learn something, and you'll see at the end, oh dear, the bank appears to have moved slightly. Hi well, Graham, we're, so, uh, we're just here looking at Bramble Bank at the moment. We're just doing a little inside Genesis survey of, of the bank itself to see how the, the big storms that we had in February have, uh, have changed the shape of the bank as such. Um, Probably quite a lot of useful information will come out of this for not only the guys that are into their fishing but even some of the sailing guys because it's quite a popular spot for some of the uh, guys when they're doing the racing at Cow's Week. You see uh, the odd boat or two get stuck on the bank where they try to push it that little bit much. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll see what effect uh, the storms have had on the bank because it's always moving and also what size the cricket pitch is going to be for the, uh, the spring tides later on this year. So it does dry out, you know, totally enough to walk on. Yeah, you see, it's uh, there is a, a tradition once a year. It dries out enough for uh, the uh, the Royal Southern and the uh, I think it's the Island Sailing Club that get together and uh, have a, a, a friendly cricket match on there. It's probably one of the shortest cricket matches because uh, they've only got the in between slack water. And last year, I think they played it in about knee height water. It didn't dry out completely. So you can see at the moment, Graham, we're just running along on the edge of what the chart shows as being the, the bank at the moment. Um, we've done a couple of passes already just on the far, a bit, bit way off the bank, just so that we can build up and see the actual incline of the bank. Um, what uh, what we, we should hopefully see as well is when we're watching the sounder page, you can actually see the undulations of the bank. It is going up and down quite a bit. Um, and we're... Uh, basically keep carrying on up, we'll carry on past the edge of the, what the chart shows as the bank because with all the southwesterly storms it's probably going to push the lot this material off up this way anyway and, uh, and have a look and see what it looks like. So Craig they've got like a big marker on the centre of the of the, uh, of the sandbank there, uh, sort of what is that on the all the gantry, what's on the top there? Yeah so that's actually uh, it's a weather station it's called uh, there's a website called Bramble Met um, I use it quite a lot. You can actually log on to Bramble Met and it'll tell you what the current wind speed and direction is, uh, water temperature, tidal height, things like that. So it's quite a, quite a useful tool. But it actually marks the, the, the edge of the bank as well. Is that actually something that you could use 
before you leave, if the weather's you know, going to be a bit changeable, you want to check if you're running across the Isle of Wight, or indeed anywhere up and down east and west of the Solent, that you might actually want to you know, view what data they've got on there before you leave port. Yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those sites you can use if you say you're coming out. I use it quite a lot if I'm deciding where I'm going to go. They're going to go Portsmouth direction or Yarmouth direction. So I'll, uh, I'll check when I get down to the boat, see what direction the wind's blowing and work out which direction I'm going to go, which is going to be the most comfortable and the least wet as well. So uh, what we're trying to do at the moment is we're actually running long ways along the bank. Part of the reason is because there's quite a bit of tide here already, even though we're around about high tide. Um, so we're running against and then with the tide and making sure we're trying to keep about 25 meters spacing between each each run that we do as well because that way we, we shouldn't have too many too many gaps between each of the runs that we do um, and then we should have a nice complete map of the bank by the time we're done um, then what we'll probably do is cross over the opposite directions so that that way it gives a real high definition map of the, of the bank and it will show out any undulations in the bank any holes and things like that that you might find. So uh, one of the uh, one of the big things for the yacht, yachty guys is uh, obviously they've got a lot more than uh, than your average fishing boat does sticking out underneath. They've probably got an extra meter and a half at least of, of keel sticking out from the bottom of the boat. So uh, certainly when they're racing, this uh, this bank tends to be in the middle of, uh, of their race course, and they uh, they'll try and push it right on the edge, try and get as close as they can try and get uh, more of an advantage when it comes to the tacking. So uh, they don't want to be hitting the, uh, the keel on the, on the bank because they end up doing a bit of damage or having to wait around until the tide turns so they can get off the bank. So we know this bank, it's not, uh, it's not a rocky bank. It, it's mainly uh, it's a sandy sort of silty material. Um, so we'll actually get a composition map out of this so we should be able to see there's quite a, an average density of of probably silt across the bank with a mixture of sand maybe a bit of shingle as well um, if it was a rocky bank what would be quite good is you, you can have your side imaging sewn on you'd actually see the rocks and things out to the sides of the boat along the bank as, as you're going along uh, but with a, a sandy bank like this you're going to get quite it's quite flat on top so you're just going to get a nice flat sonar image so the inside genesis is, as well as being the ideal tool for the, the guys that are doing their fishing you don't have to be using it with the low rinse products. Obviously, Navico, we do we do Simrad and Brooks and Gatehouse. So the guys on their cruisers that are using Simrad products, they can take advantage of this map. Um, they can use it for, for anchorages. Uh, and then the sailing guys will be using their, their B&G products. Uh, they can use it on their, their B&G Zeus chart plotters. Um, they'll be able to access this map that we're making now because we're going to share it on the Insight Genesis social map. So they'd actually be able to, to go in and download this map for themselves and then and then put it onto their, their B&G plotter. So as I was saying, it's, it's not just the yachts that need to know, people in the small speed boats, things like that, the, high, the, the higher power craft, they're not going to be necessarily sure what's, what's directly in there and say these, these banks and things are, are forever changing. So it's, it's, we're, we're doing it here, we're in a, a Revenger 715, so it's a seven meter rib with a, a Yamaha 150 on the back we can do about 45 odd knots um, and I'm always quite interested to know what uh, what the conditions are like below I mean certainly here at Bramble Bank this is somewhere that changes shape quite a lot so it's very interesting to see if I'm going to cut the corner on somewhere on a high tide has the bank actually moved and, uh, and has it shallowed off there quite a lot. So uh, a bit rough out there today, but uh, we're back at base now. So I've uploaded the recordings. So uh, let's go have a look and see uh, what our map of the Bramble Bank looks like. Right, Graham. So we're back in the office now. Uh, we've just got a notification to say that it's finished processing our log that we've done of, of the Bramble Bank. Uh, so let's log in and have a look and see what it looks like. 
Cool. So uh, let's have a look. We've got this is the the home page in my uh, my account here. So I've got all my uploads stored and populated by the areas they, that they're recorded in. Uh, obviously, we were recording in the Solent today, so uh, we have a look here. Um, it's this uh, the second one here. So let's see, uh, have a look, see what it looks like. See if uh, there's been a lot that has changed on the bank. Okay, so uh, you can see we were only out for an hour, so we didn't cover a massive amount of area, but we know for sure going by the chart that we had showing on the uh, on the HDS7 that we were covering right over the top of the, the, the bank that showed on the chart. Um, so we can see here we've, we've, we've managed to capture the whole of the bank, but it does look like it has shifted off uh, to the right-hand side slightly because uh, we didn't quite catch the end of it here, whereas on our chart we had covered quite far out to the sides of the bank and to the back end of the bank. I'm just going to... Uh, increase the because uh, it's quite flat ground increase the level of contour space in here so you can see if we click this contours option uh, we can actually adjust the contour spacing right down to, to one foot so now we've got a bit more information to show us the actual the, the gradient of the edges of the bank um, you can see over by the uh, the weather post that we saw here with the weather station bramble met there's quite a, a deep steep drop off there so i don't know whether the storms have uh, caused that at all so you can see we've got quite a long uh, stretch of contours here. So it's quite a, a slow drop off in towards this is the edge of the shipping channel here, this deeper part. Um, and you can see that the, this side of the bank is a lot more steeper. We've got a very short amount of contours and it really suddenly drops off right from about one, uh, it's about one meter down to, to 13 on that part there. Um, and then on the back end of the, the bank, as you'd expect with all the southwesterly storms, it's just really slowly flattened the back edge of the bank off. It's just quite a gradual, well, it's pretty level ground over there looking at the the map that we've got here. A couple of spots as well that where we've we've missed. We weren't quite close in the in the, the survey pattern that we're doing. So next time we go out, we can just run over this area again and uh, fill in the blanks. We'll be able to merge the two trips together. Um, so I think next, uh, next thing to, to do will be go out and cover some more of the ground around the bank so that will really then give us an idea of how much uh, area the bank now covers. So what uh, one of the other things as well we've got within Insight Genesis itself is it's showing our, our sonar recording so we can actually play play this back through um, and this red dot on the chart here actually is, is our boat location at the time of the recording so we can uh, study this sonar footage on the playback and see if there's any interesting shapes on the bottom here or maybe hot spots on the bank where we can see there's lots of fish hiding um, I did see back towards the beginning of, uh, of the recording when we were off over here somewhere um, that did appear to be some fish hiding in the in the water column um, we'll just see if we can find those at all so you can use it to highlight areas that the fish are hiding My, maybe good areas to go and, and anchor up and uh, maybe try for some bass or some mackerel something like that um, and also we can then transfer this map back onto the unit um, and we could go with as we were on the unit on the boat we can play back through and drop waypoints so we can actually take the waypoints that we've marked on the unit um, and with this button here we can actually upload those waypoints off of the SD card and overlay those on the map within Insight Genesis itself so the online map to give you a better reference of how those waypoints line up on the recording that you've made so you can see we've clicked this option here for track that's showing this this red line that looks a bit like spaghetti junction is our uh, that's the track log so that's the sort of the survey pattern which we we took it wasn't a a real strict survey you can see we had a couple of moments where we went a bit wider than others probably dodging a few of the sailing boats that were out there at the same time as us um so you can actually turn that on or off so you can then see the map for everything that it is you're not getting impeded by your track log um and what we can also do is actually then change so we at, we know there's not a lot of vegetation on the bank because there's such a, a high amount of uh, there's a, such a fast flowing tide um, but if we go into composition here um, this will actually show us that the red shows the real hard ground and the lighter colors show the, the softer ground so we we know that this bank's made up mainly of sand and silt so this red will be giving quite a strong echo which is why we've got this big red outline what I'll do is I'll just turn the uh, the contours down just so we can actually see the the composition color in a bit better um, and we'll, we'll zoom in a bit and have a look just to see uh, 
So we've got a few areas there, some real light ground, so that'd be some maybe silt um, and things like that. Um, and then these, these real dark patches are going to be the real dense mud, um, probably bits of rock and things like that as well. Maybe probably a lot of gravel on this uh, on this bank as well. So we can see as we're looking at the map here, we've got our track log showing again. Now this little red dot that we see with a yellow outline, that's actually the vessel's position according to the, the sonar recording here. So if I click uh, click play back on this, you'll see now that as we're playing through the recording, that dot is moving up and down as per when we were traveling up and down recording the sonar log itself. Um, what we can do, if we just stop that recording, if there's a, an area, if you're looking on the, the, the map like here, we can see there's an area where there's, the ground's slightly different um, and you want to see what the sonar recording looks like because it may be an area where there's fish hiding, you can actually then click with your cursor on the track log and it will move the boat position to there. So you can then jump to that part of the recording. So we can see here that there's not really a lot there. We've got Some of this is a bit of noise that we picked up from where it was quite choppy. Um, but yeah, we've got some soft ground there as well. And what you will see in some areas where you have really differentiating ground, if you've got really hard ground, really soft ground, you'll probably notice that this bottom echo will change. So you'll get um, probably a more solid red if it was really hard, rocky ground, um, or it'll stay as like a, a thin sort of yellow echo, um, depending again what color schemes you're used to using as well. So it does vary on the unit itself, it would be a slightly different color scheme to this. And those are all user sort of definable settings that the user will change those to a setting they prefer. So the other recording we did was Gurnard, if you remember, we went over to have a look at a wreck that's just off there and then we just popped up and down quickly just Gurnard Ledge just to show you the how Insight maps out one of the big drop offs. So let's have a quick look at that. So you can see uh, there's quite a bit of tide flowing at this point so trying to keep the boat side on to five against five knots of tide was a bit tricky so we have got a few gaps but uh, you can really see Gernard ledge and how quickly it drops off if we just zoom in a bit and see we've got some real nice close contours showing you how steep it was and if you remember when we watched the sounder page i think it dropped off from about sort of six meters to 25 in places so real big drop off i mean you can see how that shows on on the actual sounder screen here just on the turn that we made and um, we know this is uh well, I certainly know that this is quite a rocky place because I, I know I've had moments there getting the anchor stuck before. Um, so let's have a quick look and see what the composition looks like for this area. So I'm just going to turn the again turn the contours down a bit because we're not so worried with the composition for the contours. But yeah, we can see again we've got the real hard sort of rocky area on the uh, on the, the ledge at the top of the ledge itself and then lower down it gets onto the soft ground. The other thing that was quite interesting was obviously we recorded when we were over the, the wreck itself. So we can see here these little areas of, of hard ground which are probably bits of it's where it's picked up the, the debris itself from the, the wreck. Um, so if we have a quick look on here we might even be able to uh, yeah so we can see there's the wreck if we well, clicked on the track clock that was over the wreck and there it is shown on the sounder screen there. So we're just on on the edge of it in places, but there's definitely some uh, some fish that hide off over the top of it. And there's some also some areas that stick up from the wreck as well. So maybe a nice little spot for you to try on a on a slack tide or something. So one of the other things which is a new feature of Insight Genesis is our is the the new social map which has now gone live. It's in a beta version, but this is all of the recordings that people have shared. So there are some of the fishing guys that are quite keen to. Uh, to share the data. Some that aren't so keen to share their hotspots. But this is a real useful thing for um, maybe if you're going away on a trip somewhere. So you'll see this is the sort of the, the Bing map as such. Now all these blue dots represent areas that people have recorded data and shared it in. So if we uh, if we zoom in here on the UK, we'll start to see there's more dots appear for UK and Ireland. So there's quite a few of the inland areas that have been covered, quite a, a few of the coastal areas. Now this is going to grow and grow and grow because we're still processing the data at the moment for the social side of it and obviously there's lots of people still going out there and sharing this information. So I mean we can have a quick look, um, let's have a look at this one here which is uh, up near, this is River Avon. Um, we've got another one here which I believe this is actually um, Blenheim Palace, the lake outside the out there. 
So we can see here we've got a nice, real good quality recording that someone's done of the whole lake. So it shows us all the deep spots of the lake. Um, and what it also shows, if we click on the little uh, blue dot, it shows us the the software is able to calculate the surface acreage of the lake and it will tell you how many acres have been covered. So if we go to a, a lake that somebody hasn't actually um, done too much recording, so a bigger lake, um, we can click on an area and see, okay, so that it, that this lake here is 21 acres um, surface area, but only 10 acres have been covered. So I know, okay, there's areas there which need to be filled in. So I can download the ones that, that somebody has recorded. If I click the download option here, load that onto my, my Lawrence device. Um, and then I can actually go out to that area and use that map and also fill in any of the missing spaces, basically. Big, big advantage for people, your small trailer boats. If you're going away on holiday somewhere, maybe you're going to Windermere for a nice week away. You're taking your, your little sort of rowing boat up there. Um, and you want a map just so you've got a bit more detail, a bit more information of, of the waters around there so you're not going to go running into any rocks and things like that. Um, and also for your fishing guys, you're planning a nice fishing trip away, look, look at all the coverage we've got, all these brilliant spots in Europe. So you've got a lot of your nice big catfish lakes and things like that in France. Those are all areas that people are doing and it's just going to grow and grow and grow. So obviously there's advantages to you sharing your data for others to use. And you can take advantage of the, the data that other people have shared with you as well. So there's a real community aspect about it. So uh, I think what, what we can see from that is Insight Genesis is a really useful tool to all sorts of boat users. So all your leisure guys, even the fishing guys, because we've been able to see that Bramble Bank has been obviously affected by the big storms that we had at the start of the season. And we know there are a lot of other banks around on the, the south coast. And we know sort of Bognor Way, there's a lot of big sandbanks down there, which are real good fishing grounds. And some of those have shifted completely. So you can get out there, you can use your Lawrence unit or Simrad or, or your Brooks and Gatehouse unit and, and survey these areas and actually start to build a more updated chart and, and get an idea of where all these great fishing grounds are, any areas that you, you used to anchor that you can't now anchor in because they're, they're full of sandbanks. Insight's a really useful tool for that. So... Although it takes uh, a bit of time to do these surveys, I think it does prove that it is quite worth doing and you do get some reward out of uh, taking the time to do the surveys. So it'll help you with catching the fish or finding safe places to anchor.